Hey, uh, welcome back. We are now gonna finish the track here. Uh, there are a few things, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there are a few things that we're gonna add here. Uh, notably, we're gonna add vertex colors, we're gonna add a waterfall, we're gonna add some animated water, and uh, and we're gonna change around the color of the mushrooms, and yeah, we're just gonna make the, you know, go through the process of making the track one more time. Although we already have the, um, we already have the KMP done and we don't really have to change that anymore. All right, so the first thing that I want to add is uh, some some height right here, depth right here, uh, so it looks less, less abnormal. So go into edge select mode and then we can control click to pick shortest path and we could also do this here. And uh, I'm just trying to think how much will you see down there and you will, but uh, I'm gonna do something with that, so I'm gonna hold off on that. Uh, I'm also gonna add down here. Actually, let me let me first do what I wanted to do here. So right now we have this elevation on the right here, but then we also like we we could just leave it at that. But it makes I uh, it it's generally easier and better if you have some sort of wall here, so that way there is some sort of boxing in and you don't have to create all this background detail and uh, what have you. So uh, I could have done that better. Oh, it looks like we still have um, overlapping geometry here. So I'm gonna go Alt-Z, right? Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode. Select these two M to merge at center. And then G uh, looks like we have proportional editing on. You can see if I'm moving here, I'm noticing that stuff down here is being affected. So O to turn off proportional editing, and it's now GY, and maybe GX, GY. Okay, uh, Alt-Z to turn back off, X-ray mode, and control click around here. That is the, <laughs> the good thing and the bad thing about control click is that it does pick shortest path. All right, the easiest way we want to do this is Alt-Z up, and then you're like, wow, this is really, this is really lame. So what you do is you uh, go from the center and you scale it out. Uh, we could also go Control E and offset, and actually that's more akin to what we want. And it looks like it didn't fill it in. So uh, ah, I see. Um, well, let's see. How do we want to do this? So this is what it's doing right now. And what we could honestly do. Let's let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. I don't know if this is going to work well or not, but uh, let's try it. So, um, oops, I want to delete faces, not vertices. So right now I have this edge loop up here, and I have this edge loop down here, and I want to connect the two. So I can Alt-click to select this whole edge loop, um, or remember Shift-Alt-Click if you're not on this, select these two, and now I can probably go Edge and Bridge Edge Loops. And now we can see this worked this works quite perfectly. Uh, one thing that I don't like is how high this this wall is, so I'm going to bring this down. Um, but now we can see this is off-road and this is more clearly some sort of rock thing. And then we can also just control E and extrude out the edges here. So we have some sort of some sort of top up here and uh, then we can also easy to bring it down and then uh, maybe we want to scaled out here as well. And we're getting back into this. It looks ugly and I don't I'm not quite ready to texture yet, so I'm going to go back into matcap and I'm going to go to random. So now I can actually see the geometry I'm working with. So this looks this is good. Obviously this looks less good over here. Um, and so we'll just I uh, uh, how do we draw and do this? I guess we can select these faces and just uh, delete them. And then we'll we'll go from there. Delete faces. Uh, yep. And delete this face. And that one. And we'll also go in here. And there's some really messy geometry, so we can just delete these. And I. Uh, yeah, did this more more manually per se. So go into vertex mode and select these F to fill. Select these F to fill. And we can go into top view and extrude this out and 
shift select all of these and uh, yeah so do that and we can also um, notice that there's a bunch of overlap here so we can probably just merge these together at center and uh, let's start filling out some some things we can probably just honestly keep it here if we want to merge these together at center if they're not merged already and uh, yeah this won't give us the best result but honestly you're probably not going to ever see that and this looks a lot better than it did previously we can also add some random variation which is after all the the, the realism that that keeps the tracks you know brings the tracks to life or or whatever um so just random variation uh, and then we'll also do that out here and we could do proportional editing but uh, I don't know I'm not <laughs> not feeling it right now we'll just we'll just manually move a few we can move some in move some in and uh, yeah just create the random variation while keeping the overall overall shape and not creating too uh, many like unnatural seams, like there's an angle, which is which is fine, but uh, just being being aware of that, and we can also add some height variation here, uh, but not too much. So I'm pressing Shift as a GZ and then Shift uh, to control the movement right here, and we can also bring some down. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. I want this to be mostly flat. Um, that looks good now. And now that I, I held off on this, I, you can see why, because it's nice to just have them here. It looks like we also have some really messy geometry right back here, but I like this curve right now. So I'm just gonna delete this interface that we have here. Um, and yeah. Now let's go and uh, looks like there's there's some messiness here that you can't see, so we'll just delete those faces, and we can merge. Um, go into X-ray mode, Alt Z, M to merge, and uh, we can also delete this this face. Go in here, delete faces. So now we can just select these and uh, fill. This also uh, isn't maybe the best. Uh, and one thing we can do about that is extrude this down and then also fill in this. That's one way of, of doing this. Otherwise, you're going to have a giant N-Gon face there, and that might not be what you want. Um, you can also always uh, select these two, right click and subdivide, and then you have another loop, and then maybe you can edge slide that here F to fill. And now, no, uh, I, I filled those two, but I didn't fill this whole face. So we'll just fill this whole face. And now I can uh, delete here only faces. Uh, actually, we want to delete this too. Edges. And then we get to keep these. And now we have a nice quad here and a nice quad there. Obviously, this comes with the drawback of that this is no longer a nice quad. So anything that you're unwrapping uh, here, here, when you try to generalize it back to there, you're trying to st take stuff there and unwrap it to here, it's not gonna be nice. So what we're gonna have to do is some sort of default unwrap and then uh, UV squares is, that will take care of it. Um, but yeah, it's just something that's, you know, follow active quads per se won't work in that case. So we can also, um, uh, with the F2 add-on enabled, you can just hit F with one thing selected, um, and that's the Edit Preferences add-ons F2, Mesh F2. And then this allows you a really nice capability of uh, so-called spider web of being able to just select this and know, well, hey, I'd like to fill this in. I'd rather not select all these, fill, and then I get a triangle, and I have to, you know, like, select these, fill, and then select these two, 
right click subdivide and then try to move this along here and get close enough or really I just want it I just want it to fill outwards from there so with that F2 add-on you can't just press F um, sometimes it might not do it properly in which case you do have to do the manual method but uh, yeah in our case we in our case we don't so just hit F F to fill and the F2 add-on is, is nice enough to know what what you want to do so we're just gonna keep going here pressing F I uh, yeah so this is something where it didn't go properly uh, due to this fence here and so I <coughs> excuse me a bit of a cough um so one thing we can do is we can just select all these and this won't lead us as nice in geometry but uh, this is definitely doable select all these and then easy nope I I forgot to select this and easy and just get this very close and then select these uh, alt Z and merge at center and uh, likewise here just to make sure that there's nothing happening there we can just always go into x-ray mode and we could also just select everything and merge by distance I uh, but we note that the UV wrapping won't be follow nice with follow actually quads but the UV unwrapping and UV squares will work um, and so we're also gonna just um, let's see how do we want to do this maybe we want to select these eh, this yeah so th this is something where it's not really gonna be nice I'm gonna subdivide this GG to edge slide and then I have a quad here F to fill and I can always GG edge slide this along more or less depending on whatever but this is fine so we're just gonna fill this in there nice um, and then the uh, now that we created this ending wall uh, first we're gonna add foliage on top of that uh, you know just to make it so it's not just a cliff wall and then darkness it's a cliff wall but you also have background scenery going on so we're gonna add trees and bushes um, and the last thing we need to do here is um, add, yeah, add some add some more walls on this right side, which we neglected, and uh, filling in this, and then, uh, and then uh, th I thought, all right, then then we need to add a waterfall, but that's that's about it. So we're just gonna we need to go into this object, right? We're trying to edit this, and it, there's no mesh over here for us to edit. You know that we can't select any of this that's because you have to select this object per se so we're just gonna uh, go around maybe control click nope that didn't work control click yeah okay shift click around and uh, here and here okay nice and now we can just easy and the same thing with that one we're gonna add some random variation so we're gonna uh, easy uh, Easy S to scale, easy S to scale in, easy S to scale, GX to move it on the X direction, uh, and we could also do GY just to grab it on the Y, and then easy and uh, bring it down and maybe scale that up. And we can select this whole edge loop and bring it down and maybe scale it up. Cool. So uh, now we just need to if just go around, making sure this all looks all looks correct. Um, you're not going to mostly see this edge, so I, I'm not going to add as much detail as I did over here. I'm not going to go out of my way, though. I you're more than welcome to. Obviously, you're not making this exact track, and so you know, I maybe this rambling isn't as as helpful, but uh, hopefully, you're getting some amount of you know what is the process I'm going through when I'm making the track um, and so on so uh, we're now gonna start merging up here so a Q to zoom in and I can also here's another cool uh, hockey is a uh, number pad slash and then it just isolates in on this object and everything else disappears the way we get out of this is by pressing number pad slash again right but we want to zoom in here and just merge some stuff and merge some stuff M to merge uh, you're like, well, there's nothing to merge over here. 
uh, like you could try to go up here. So what we'll just do is right click subdivide and now I have, now I do have stuff to merge. M to merge and uh, M to merge. Nice. And now this last part here, I, I have this that I need to fill in. So I'm just gonna go around here and select these points, merge. This is a lot of, a lot of my modeling is just selecting points and merging. Alt Z to see through objects, but mostly just, yep, merge. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna merge. I don't know what I'm doing, merge. And uh, yeah, now we have this back. Uh, we're gonna press number pad, or, or slash to get out of it. Um, and the, yeah, now we're gonna add foliage at top and then a waterfall and then we'll be done. And we'll actually, yeah, get this going back in game. So shift right click to uh, move this 3D cursor. And then actually we do have these trees already. So I'm just gonna steal them because why do work when you don't have to? This is a good question. And we'll just uh, control D or shift D to duplicate. Shift D R S to scale. 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 Nice. The now obviously we have to bring this stuff upwards. Um, GZ, and uh, we can keep some of it down here, maybe. We can keep that down there, maybe move this up. And I think in general these are too large compared to the rest, so I'm going to scale them back down. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's, now we also want to add, yeah, we could also add some gravestones up here, or tombs. What's the difference between a gravestone and a tomb? The tomb like more, I don't know. What is the difference between a gravestone and a tomb? Is a tomb like, does it have to be the whole, well, I was gonna say buried underground, but that's not, it's not quite right. You know, like the catacombs, is that is that more tomb-like than a, than a random rock in the ground? What makes, what makes one rock more, more notable than another rock. Uh, anyways, we still have some stuff floating under, so we're just gonna select these and uh, bring them up, raise them from the from the ground. Is that a is that a biblical thing? Uh, anyways. So this is, we're, we're definitely not in tutorial land anymore. We're definitely in, I am making a custom track uh, and maybe you're enjoying me uh, do it and maybe you're getting something out of it that you that you didn't know before. Um, actually, so we've added, we've added gravestone to those decorations. And the last thing I want to do, uh, well, I keep saying last and I'm gonna keep saying last uh, for a while now. Um, I wanna add a pumpkin. Why? Because I already have the texture for it. So if I go back in uh, flat and texture, let me see, what does these trees? Yeah, those trees look look fine. Uh, th this one is floating a bit too much for my liking. Um, and if I was really good, I'd change around the textures of the tombstones or change up their scale some more and change up the angle. But uh, this is gonna be in the background and also uh, this is a tutorial track, and um, yeah. So I'm gonna add a, a waterfall. How do? We, uh, and I'm gonna put it. <laughs> I, I I was like I'm gonna have a waterfall, but actually I don't know where it fits in the track. I don't know where it fits in the track. Where does the waterfall fit in the track? Where does it fit in the track? I don't know. Like maybe, maybe like here, out. Oh. Maybe like here. I don't know. Actually, I don't like. I don't. I don't like the. I don't like the waterfall. But uh, basically, what you do, 
for a waterfall is you can do the array curve method as well. But basically it's a plane and then you add a um, waterfall texture on top of it and then I'll show you once we're animating our C underneath how to add the um, you know waterfall animation or what have you. Um, and then add that plane and yeah, have it go where you want it to go. Uh, actually, the, the one modeling thing that I wanted to show with that, not just uh, a waterfall for waterfall's sake, is if you um, select this edge and say you have this uh, going out in the distance here, you're like, well, wouldn't it be nice if I had more, if I like wanted to bevel this edge? You could add a bunch of loop cuts and then, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, and then have like proportional editing, but that won't be as good as control B to bevel and then you can increase up the segment count and scroll in and out. So there's your there's your modeling tip is control B to bevel. You can also control shift B if you want to bevel one edge control shift B. That's how, that's how you bevel just one one particular edge. Cool. Um, Okay, well I'm just going to texture the rest and we'll we'll go from there. So I'm just going to add a, bun, a rock texture on the edge of this and uh, maybe I'll... Here's the question, do I have a different rock texture? Well, let me show you what I'm thinking. Do I have... Uh, let me add a new material and a new image texture. Uh, hold on. Full screen. Sorry about that. Um, so I have, uh, let's see, I have like this texture here. I have this text, this rock texture. I have this rock texture and I have, uh, well, these rock textures, but uh, in particular a black rock texture, which might be up top that I missed. This one, yeah. So I could either have um, like this, sort of style going all the way around, you know, including here, this, this same rock texture here, I could have that on here, or I could say, oh, well, maybe this, you know, doesn't match in with the, with the brown here. So let me take a more, uh, yeah, just let me take a different texture just to shake things up. Like, does that, does that fit any better than this black rock here? And, or does this, uh, and obviously you can edit these textures in a texture editor, but I'm too lazy to do that. Um, does this, does that work better? Um, I think my first instinct and I uh, is that this is a very spooky track and I, I don't want this to be too playful, but then I also have this really dark rock here and for it to be on its own without any justification feels a bit off. So I'm gonna just add this rock texture everywhere. So uh, I'm just gonna go around here. Actually, I could probably, yeah, I'll click to select that whole edge loop and then uh, C to circle select. This is also another quick way to do stuff. And up top here, I'm gonna have some sort of mud. Um, so I'm not gonna have that with rock, but uh, select all this and give it a rock, right? C to circle select, middle, uh, right click to get out of it, and then uh, middle mouse to scroll in and up, and middle mouse to deselect, right click to get out of it. Um, sorry about that. I, we're gonna add, we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna find our rock texture, and we're gonna assign it. So now this is sharing the same material with, with this. Um, and we're gonna U and C to do a cube project, and I'm gonna scale everything up and uh, see what it looks like here. Looks like I forgot to, oops, uh, shift select and also assign it here and then cube project again and scale it up. So I, now what I'm noting here is that I'm getting some pretty harsh uh, striations here. And that's just because I have a really stretched texture vertically um, you can see here that there's maybe it's going across now instead of vertically, it's going somewhat across, and then we're back to being, you know, very sharp striations there. And then back here, it doesn't really matter, but that looks, that looks good. 
I'm yeah, so I'm I uh, one thing that I'd like to do is to get these uh, vertical what I keep calling striations, which might be the right word, it might not be, but tone them down. Uh, so maybe scaling on the y direction might be might help out the cause. And yeah, it's, it definitely seems to have done that. And I'm also noticing a lot of repeating patterns here. So I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. So what yeah, I can just do is just scale it down. And that should that should help somewhat. You can also like try rotating if that if that yields any better results. Um, but I think this is fine. And then uh, I need to give this top some sort of texture. Even though you're not going to see a whole lot of it, you are going to see it. Um, and I'm just going to give it the same brown mud because it blends in with the rock here. And then, yeah, it's just a um, thing that we've used before and it makes sense in the... So I'm going to... You could probably just... Yeah, UU to unwrap. You could also UV to project from view. I'm not sure it makes too much of a difference in this case. And uh, yeah, now we have this this brown texture on top and bottom, and that looks that looks a lot better. So um, yeah, I also need to add some rock stuff down here, and I could add the same rock texture. I'm worried that uh, you've seen so much of it when you're driving throughout here that it might uh, bore you. Um, plus, it's like a whole different section gameplay-wise, so it makes sense to have like a whole different section theming-wise. Uh, one thing you can always do is just Control Shift Select to select a bunch, and then just deselect the stuff that you don't want. You can also Circle Select um, with C, and then uh, yeah. Select more, and then go back and take out the stuff that you don't want. Just obviously make sure that you do get everything. Um, and uh, select this. And that seems to be all the all the stuff here. And let me now give this give this our new um, new texture. And I'm not sure what I want this texture to be yet. Like I said, I want to keep this dark and gloomy, but uh, at the same time, I don't want it to be too bad. I guess I could have this as like a almost man-made thing, even though we did add some um, you know, detail there. Um, so maybe not. Uh, let's see. We could add this ash rock. Yeah, that might that might work. And then cube project will probably probably work well enough for rock. And uh, you can see I did not select. Oh, right, so right now it has the different, you know, it's assigned different road. I actually have to assign it this, um, yeah, just assign it that, and I'm going to scale it down. So we're getting less of a repeat, and now this, yeah, that, that looks good. I Obviously this is maybe not looking so good, is this really sharp transition from, um, yeah, rock to, rock to road. I, and I guess what I can do, um, actually I might just do that, yeah I'll do that, uh, is like give it reason for there to be such a sharp divide, or you know this is more a man-made structure, why is it that way, um, like what can we use to indicate that this is, that this is man-made, um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, oops, Select more, and then control to deselect. And then what I can do is I can just add a small fence thing here, and I'm gonna make it really small. And I now need to select this part, and uh, we can also select this part, but I don't know if it'll work super well. And control select. And uh, now let's give this a fence texture. We could have the same fence texture as here. Um, and we might do that. Uh, we might also use some of our other fence textures. I tend to use like a bajillion textures um, just because I feel like, you know, it adds that extra bit of, you know, contrast and, you know, just difference, easy way to get a difference between the sections is by really having a different color, a different texture that you're encountering. Like these two roads being different um, just adds that, you know, 
difference that I find I find interesting. Plus, it means I get to showcase all the textures that I have, um, and it's really the textures that drive the track a lot for me. So this, uh, even though it's good, it has a black background, um, and it's not actually a transparent background, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate. Fortunate. Um, we have this rope fence. We also have this. Um, and then that's the one we have used before. And I think I'm going to go with this fence texture. Um, and then I also need to... Um, actually, yeah, so right now a lot of it is transparent. So I'm going to select this. Nope, that didn't do what I wanted to do, unsurprisingly. So this might also be better in solid mode, so that way you're not trying to deal with transparent stuff. But if you go to UV editing, and if you UU, and then scale it up, you know, this is a just good way of saying, oh, what does it look like? Well, right now it's going, you know, the opposite way of what I want. So I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and scale it up till it till it's at the bounds of this. And I'm going to scale it on the X, so I'm getting, yeah, stuff like that, and that. That looks good, except it doesn't look good. Uh, right now, this top part is you know you're clipping and seeing the bottom part again. It's repeating in the space, so let me do that and uh, also bring this up here. And then at this uh, very edge, we're seeing some uh, clipping there, so I can uh, go to this edge and then G X and Shift uh, to make that smoother. Likewise here, we don't really want this being cut off, so we're just going to select this edge. You can also select, select the whole thing and try to scale it up or down, but that's trying to control both ends at the same time, and it doesn't really matter if this is stretched just a tad more than over here. People aren't going to notice that. So uh, I'm now going to do the same thing over here, and I should probably also call this fence which I can't spell, fence two, um, and you, uh, you, you to give it a default UV map. It's going the wrong way again, like this is facing this way. Uh, so I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees, scale up on the Y, but again, we don't want them going over, and that seems fine. And then we can scale it on the X, and just make sure that they're roughly the same um, width apart, and that seems close enough. Uh, here, yep, that's a good cutoff there, and here, um, this is also a good cutoff. That is some good luck we had right there. Um, and now, the, uh, yeah, this is uh, all I want to do with the track. So, uh, one thing right now we're going to do is we're, we're, we're done right now with our course model. So now we're going to go through making the course model again, making the collision again, the KMP, I, we're going to have to change some of it around because we scaled up the track, which means that we're going to have to you know replace things. But that shouldn't matter too much. The thing that we will check right now is our normals. Um, and I, unsurprisingly, our fences are going to be weird. We do want to swap these, though, um, because I, when you're making the collision, like, e even though in the course model, these are going to be two-sided. Um, in the collision, what's happening is this is going to be the back face. So you, you're just going to fly through the fence right now. Um, or you'll, you'll get a slight slight clip, per se, but it won't, won't actually stop you. So what I did is Alt-N to bring up the normals and then flip. Um, you can also try to like recalculate outside or inside, but I just manually select the ones I want and flip them, and then the rest of this, it's all looking good. Um, obviously, this isn't maybe the direction that we want to see it at, but it's going to be... Um, yeah, you're never going to interact with this in the collision, and then also uh, it's going to be coal none, so you are going to see all of this. You notice we still have this, this small texture error, um, and that's because the tr tree I was duplicating it from didn't exactly have all of these artifacts um, cropped out in the UVs, and so when I duplicated around, it kept that issue. 
you know, right here. It's the exact same thing. But that is that is fine. Um, and yes, yeah, so the last thing I want to do before, um, or not the last thing I want to do, uh, what I am going to do uh, to get this to export is we're gonna um, make sure that all the materials are in the same uh, in the same object. Right now we have fifty three objects, <coughs> which is a large amount of objects. So what we can do is select everything A. And then Control J is to join. Control J to join, um, and then we're you know everything's in this one object, and we have all the materials there. And we can select A, you know, tab into Edit Mode, select A, and then P to separate by material. So now, right now, all our rocks are in the same material. Our road is in the same material. Our uh, mud here, our gravestones here, our mud here, our gravestones there our uh, trees, our bush, you know, etc. Um, and let me just, if you look down here into the material tab, you can check, you know, do I have any repeat things? Um, where we gave them different materials, um, even though they have the same texture. And what you have to do for that is you just have to join the two objects, um, like select this and this, control J, and then remove one of the materials. Um, but looking back through here, it does not it does not seem so. And um, this seems all good. I uh, actually the last thing I do want to add is I want to add a start line because <laughs> I never remember to add start lines, and uh, that would probably be useful. So I I want my start line to start right about here. Um, remember, because I want to. I I guess I'm like right now judging the mushrooms when you're coming around here. Uh, do you immediately, you know, land on, you know, in the air when you're crossing the finish line, or do you have some amount of landing on the ground? Um, and then I'm also trying to say, well, you start here, and then you turn and turn, and I'm trying to balance that. But I like here, and I'm going to add loop cut with Control R, and then I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to P to separate by selection. And then now I have this object. I'm going to remove the default material. I'm going to get a new material, call it uh, finish, and uh, image texture. And I'm going to grab a finish line texture, which I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah, here we go. Um, and then I also want to UV unwrap this because I don't want the road UVs. I just want, um, sorry, ah, it's all the way over here. And I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And you can see we're already pretty close to what we want. And scale it up. So we're at the top of the, you know, we're getting the whole bounds here. Then I want to scale it on the X. So that, that looks maybe good. And right now we're getting some stretching. Why is that? That's because we're using a square right now. And uh, there is some curvature in the road. So maybe I should have this as uh, scaled down on the Y. And you can see this already makes it more square. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add some loop cuts here. And you can see how this it flattens it out. Um, it's still not perfect, um, but uh, that's that's a lot better. And then you can also uh, you know, re-UV unwrap this. Rotate 90, scale it up, uh, scale it in on the X, and uh, scale it up again maybe. And scaled in on the X and you can see how yes this is a lot straighter but then we also have to deal with this we can do two grid by shape and uh, now we get some of that distortion again which okay it's just something we're gonna have to gonna have to live with uh, you notice right now if we were to rejoin these together this is just one face whereas if this this is many you know so you're gonna have some end guns here when these intersect but that's that's fine um Cool. So this is also a different object than the rest of the stuff. If I grab it, nothing else goes with it. And I, uh, I guess I also want to um, check. These are called tree. This is called road. Just making sure that these all have sensible names. I think there's still one that has a material name, which isn't very helpful. Like this, we're gonna call it rock two. Um. Yeah. And now all these have sensible names 
we're going to uh, file export and we want to export as an FBX. Cool. Uh, right now we're in the textures folder because we're going to use ReStudio and uh, when we read in the DAE from ReStudio it needs to be needs to be here. We're going to export just the mesh. Actually, 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 we're not done. We're not done. Why are we not done? Because I want to add vertex colors. Uh, to add vertex colors, you go uh, here and you can go to uh, vertex paint. And now what we can do, uh, we can go, if you go to the shading tab, it might be easier to see um, because it's automatically set on this viewport shading mode. Um, and, uh, oops. <laughs> One thing I can do is I can shift A to add in here. This is the node editor uh, and we can search, um, nope, uh, shift A. And then when you're in here, vertex color. All right, let's totally, <laughs> let's, let's pretend that I didn't totally just go look up how to do this because it's been a while and I've only done it a few times. Uh, this this is the shader uh, setup that you need to have. You need to have, for vertex colors, you need to have your base image texture. You need to have your vertex color. If you go over to this uh, object data properties panel on the right, uh, the green triangle thing, you can see your vertex colors. There's this default color, which we're using. And then we're plugging these in and setting factor to one. And then importantly, we're changing this multiply node from I uh, mix to multiply and you can add nodes, nodes by shift A and then searching mix RGB um, and then switching that over to multiply and then changing that in your base color. Uh, vertex colors also allow you to do some uh, vertex alpha that's with specifically this alpha channel um, and you can blend together textures. Right now I'm just going to add colors over top of it and I've already done some of that. Basically you just go to uh, vertex paint and then you choose your color. I'm going to choose something that's akin to this, um, you know, mud here and maybe even make it a bit brighter. And then you can just draw on top of here and you can see, yeah, it's, it's being added. I can, if I do all of this, you can see obviously the effect that I'm getting there. Um, and you can change the strength. So if you want, yes, I want more darkness there. Um, or saying, oh, I just want, I just want a bit of, bit of stuff. Um, and yeah, that's, that's vertex colors. Uh, I'm not any good at it, but that is, that is the basics. One other thing, uh, and then obviously it doesn't look correct in layout or not obviously, but it doesn't look correct in layout. Uh, but if we go to object mode, you can't see the vertex colors anymore. Uh, but in the shading, you still can see the, um, yeah, vertex colors. Uh, if one thing that I'm not going to do, but that can be helpful uh, when you're making your own tracks is to add a, um, no, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but just for illustrative purposes, and we're not going to do this here, rotate by 90, shift A to add the object, uh, wrote R, X, R, Z, 90 is how I type in there, and G, X, G, X, right? Um, uh, scale X as well, S, X. Um, what you can do is you can add a Boolean modifier, and then I can select this object that I want, and I want difference, and I'm going to choose fast, and then if I go ahead and apply this and delete this object, you can see I've now cut a hole through my Actually, I kind of like this. Yeah, we're we're gonna keep that. I uh, yeah, we just cut a hole through our um, object, and that's that's the boolean. There you go. Uh, some other settings that you can use with it. I uh, is here we go. Uh, you can join together uh, two objects. Um, you can only take their intersection. So if I did only intersection, it would only take the stuff within the cylinder. Um, and then uh, typically I've had uh, problems with exact and fast seems to do what I want. Uh, there seems to be like duplicated vertices and uh, things not quite correct. Uh, fast seems to fast seems to work. 
Okay, so, uh, but I do want to do that, so I'm gonna uh, just apply here, Control A, and then delete this. Um, you can also like, oh, I'd, I'd like to know what this looks like. What you can do, you can go in your object properties uh, panel here, and then you can set the visibility to just be bounds. Um, uh, viewport display, and then just show the um, wireframe instead of the actual object. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. There's the bounds. Or I guess we want the wire, right? Yeah, and now you can see if you s scale up this uh, cylinder, you can see what it's doing, right? It's just cutting out anything that it touches. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's one trick you can do is go over to object um, properties and viewport display and go wire or bounds. Um, but in my case, I'm going to apply it and uh, ah, this this object is what's cut into and then uh, apply. Cool. Um, and delete that and there's that. So uh, what have I done? I've done some vertex colors. I've shown you how to do booleans. I, and we've corrected the normals. One thing that we did when we scaled it up is uh, we didn't account for this y equals zero. You have to make sure that your whole course is above y equals zero, and it does look like that in this case. So we don't have to worry about there. Our normals are all correct. I've said that before. We have a start line, and uh, yeah, I, I think this is, you could maybe like have a, this be trickable or not, but I think this is good enough. Hey, I'm from the future. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the BRS. The first time I did it, I ran across an issue with 3Studio, and I'll now show you how to fix that, which I did not know at the time. So here's our model. Uh, right, we have this arch over here with our Boolean. We have these vertex colors. Uh, I forgot to include that you should have it on clamp, uh, but I don't think that should change too much. If you also want your materials to look better, um, you can turn down spec there to zero, and that just makes it so you're, it's not shiny everywhere which isn't how Marika redoes it. Anyways, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. Uh, create the FB, or the BRES. So we're gonna call this V3 um, and scale 100, export FBX, uh, removal, add, let's get this version three FBX, convert it to a DAE, convert. And then we open up Free Studio. Uh, we open and find our v3 and I uh, DAE file we want a BRS model sometimes I I've found it helpful to not combine identical materials um, yeah I, I don't you know recommend it using it all the time as it is helpful but uh, sometimes when you come across errors it's easier to just you know not have automation and try to do it more manual I, but we do want them to detect transparent. Uh, that was very nice. And uh, that was good. Now you'll notice uh, in ReStudio, what's going to happen is we have this, this issue. Uh, where's our road? Uh, I think this is a bug with ReStudio, uh, as it is in uh, Alpo. So if you go ahead and you look at the um, materials over here, let's just make this full screen. If you go ahead and look at materials, you can see this road right now has no texture associated with it. If you switch this over to vertical tabs, you can see on the samplers, there's no sampler. Whereas if you go over here, there is that sampler of mud or what have you. Um, and if you look down here in textures, there is no actual road texture. There's this texture, but we use that for uh, this, this road over here, not this road here. So how do we fix this? Uh, well, I'm gonna go to Brawl Crate because that's not what I, that's, what I know how to do. But first I need to add a sampler here. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the sampler, add a sampler, and I'm going to steal the, maybe the um, texture here. And you're like, why isn't it showing anything? Uh, this took me some time too. But the, the main thing that you always want to do, you know, if, if you wanna know how material looks, if how I, um, yeah, I, or what the settings are for that, you go into, this stage and you just compare it with something you know that works. So I know that this mud texture has the right settings as it, it you know shows up correctly in game. 
if you look at these settings here, operand A, B, and C, this is you know your shader constants, multipliers, and then you look over here, you can see something different. Like it's not, it's only looking at the raster color, and it's not getting any texture data because it didn't have any texture data to start with. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy over these settings here. So we want operand A to be zero, and then we want this to be what texture and then raster? Yeah. So we want our texture color and then our raster, which is our um, vertex colors. Um, and now you can see it works as per normal. Uh, we just have the different material and then we'll go ahead and fix this in Brawl Crate. Uh, the rest of the settings, those are all the same. One thing that we don't have, if you look at samplers, is we don't have this MIP maps turned on. So we should turn that on. And one thing about these MIP maps right now, they're blurry. Uh, I kind of like the pixelated look, um, or not pixelated, but just the, the blurry doesn't quite doesn't quite fit right. Uh, so I'm going to do that, um, and yeah. So I'm now going to save this as um, right now. You have to specifically say save as and version three, and it automatically overwrites, which uh, there should probably be something to fix that. Um, Yes, these are my previous, let's see, where, where am I going? I'm going to I'm custom tracks and uh, it has been some time. I, so I have my DAE file here and I'm going to, or VRES, and I'm gonna stick it in the, stick it in the course model. I'm sorry if I'm going faster uh, because I am going faster. I, I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay, great. So what did we do? We had a ReStudio model and it didn't do our vertex colors quite correctly uh, because it didn't actually have this road. There's no road in this textures folder. So we actually need to add the texture. And right now there isn't an add texture in ReStudio. So you have to import a texture here. Um, and we're going to find our road uh, texture. Cool. And the CMPR is what we want. Uh, that's your normal solid color. 512 is a bit large, but it is a road texture. So um, we're gonna see it a whole lot. So it makes sense to have that level of detail for that um, texture, maybe. Um, and then on the, the actual material itself, this road is still referencing this uh, uh, finish line. So we want it to reference this road. So the way we can do that is right, just right click and rename and now road. And now it's referencing road. Likewise, if we want this mud to reference that mud, these to be the same, I could rename this to mud again, and then they'd share the same texture. Um, this is the material and these are the texture references. So you can have more than one, um, like our water, um, which we now need to actually go back and add. So I can't remember if I've done this before, but Billy Noodles Brawl Crate um, plugin, let's chromium. And I, uh, Billy Noodles, my car reanimation. I, uh, and then in here, this shows you how to install it. It's okay. Here's an ad, but uh, that shows you how to install it. It's super, super easy. Um, and then uh, I have a bunch of things that I've ripped, which all suck. Like they're so bad uh, animations. But uh, you, we can go down in Mario Kart. We just water. Um, like the default uh, lake, it, what, what you do is you'd go to, I, I can't remember if I showed this or not, so I'm just gonna show it again. Um, and then in any case, it's it's good. Uh, you can take, uh, you know, go to a Marie Kurt Wee course, you can extract it out, and then you can say, oh, maybe I want uh, old, uh, let's see, what do I want? Old Obig, that's our ghost valley. Um, and maybe let's look at our course model. And uh, if you look at all these materials, you, uh, actually there's no animated textures, so this isn't, <laughs> this won't work. Um, but you go maybe to Treehouse Course, which is um, Maple Treeway, you can see as animated textures and each one of these, this is your boost panel, this is your half pipe, and then this is your C. Um, or your water. So you go into this materials and then you find your C um, and you can see it has three texture references right now. Uh, yeah, and they blend between those and do different stuff. 
but plugins, Mario Kart Wii animations, and then at the bottom, there's an add animation. And I apologize for the echo. I didn't bother to actually properly set up my microphone. New preset, and then call it, you know, you can call it like uh, maple tree way water, and then EFC, and it will just automatically have it. So that way you might have to restart your application. But when you go back here, then you can go in your plugins and go to Mario Kart Wii, like import that and over water. And it automatically adds this shader down here and it automatically has these um, things here. One thing that you're gonna have to change for this uh, track in particular, this water right now, you can see there's no color here, but in game there is color. And that that is through this uh, shader color block here. If you click down here, they're right now blue. Um, so this also works with different objects. So like fire snakes, um, you'd go into this shader block color, color zero and switch it to um, something that you want. So I'm gonna switch it to a, a green and then I wanna, I'm not gonna show alpha so I can actually see what color I'm looking at. And I want this to be a pretty dark green. Um, that looks good. And down here, um, show alpha. You, yeah, I don't know exactly what all these colors are. Um, but maybe let me go for something on that end, uh, just for a bit of blue tint in our green murky water. So uh, yeah, now we added a lake. I you know, imported this uh, animation, and then we changed the color on that. and. Uh, I'm from the future, so uh, I know that when I play this course, um, sorry, let me go back to it, and aha, uh -huh, here we go. I I know that right now the uh, the default um, what what do you call it my VR core in the the skybox. There you go. I uh, is currently intersecting with the track. Uh, and we don't want that. So how do you move the actual skybox? What you have to do is you have to go into the bones. The bones, the bones, the bones. And uh, then here's the scale, and we can just increase the scale. to. You can delete everything and say three. And uh, if you make your skybox too large, there's a certain distance at which Mario Kart Wii just won't render. Um, and so you'll get some clipping artifacts. Um, but three times should not cause any of that. Um, and it avoids me having to deal with Blender and KMP, like the actual coordinate system of Mario Kart Wii. Like, what's the actual translation? I don't know. Like, it's kind of painful. X, you know, there's this X, Y, Z, so this is up or what have you. Um, that can just be painful. Um, and the way you do that is actually, I forgot to mention this last time, but um, if you use the. Gabriella's KMP plugin utilities, uh, which is super awesome, useful. Uh, you can you shift right click to your 3D cursor, and then you can grab your position from your 3D cursor, and then you can copy that and you can paste it into KMP Cloud. You know, just click this and then Control V in KMP Cloud, and it is awesome, a lifesaver, so you actually don't have to calculate any of these, you know, conversion between Blender to uh, Marie Kart Wii uh, coordinate system. Awesome. Um, and I think I've shown you the link for the KMP utilities. If I haven't, you can search um, Chromium uh, Blender KMP utilities. Um, yeah. And uh, in the description here should be the actual plugin itself. Yeah. And just download that and go through the steps. It is awesome. 100% awesome. So I, yeah, I scaled up the skybox. I, um, what else did I do? I, well, we, we made it so the course actually now functions. And I, then I'm now going to, uh, <laughs> my future self will leave myself present self to do the KCL and then I'm going to help out in the KMP as we need more mushrooms and so I'm just going to do that uh, alright so I 
we're now going to control shift s to then uh, save this as v2 uh, kcl and uh, now we're going to get all our road together and join them in the same object and here we can just nicely uh, do this in control j and remove all the textures get a new material and you know have this as light blue and call this as road. You can't see this because you need to be in material preview, not solid mode. Solid mode is only looking for textures. Um, can you, no, you can't do material. Um, this will read, you know, the actual base color. Uh, here we want this to be maybe some uh, slippery off-road. So, uh, yeah, uh, slippery off-road. And I, I'm going to go to the shading tab and remove this texture. And I'm going to change the base color to be some sort of brown. And then maybe I also want this to be a, yeah, I'll, I'll take this mud as well to be, um, to be the same. Uh, yeah, so we can just control J. And then in here, we can just remove the, remove the mud. Um, and now we're back to slippery off-road. And we can delete these trees because you're never actually going to interact with them. They're either inside this fence or they are on top of here, which you should not be able to access. So we can just delete those. Same with the gravestones. Same with these lamps. Same with these tombstones. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of KCL optimization is um, just selecting a lot of these excess stuff and just removing them. I, I want this to be... Well, first I'm just going to delete all this because it's really annoying me. I'm going to get this a uh, green and make it a dark green um, for obvious reasons. I'm going to, uh, this should be a wall. So I'm going to, this fence uh, is now a wall. And then I want this and this to be the same wall. So I'm going to control J and remove the rock material. And now all the rock is wall. Likewise for this, control J and remove the material. So now we have all this as wall. And uh, we also want this as, as wall. <coughs> nice. So uh, we also want some trickable road. So actually, first what we want to do is grab this and we want all this top. So Alt-Click Alt or Shift-Alt-Click or whatever, you can just drag it up. So that's how we create invisible walls there. There might actually be issues uh, there, there might be issues with here. So you you could, you know, if you did want your tracks to be ultra safe, you can consider like cutting out all this middle bit since you shouldn't be able to access here anyways, this would be good KCL optimization. And you just have to be careful that you're not deleting parts of the actual road, but uh, just going around here. Well, making sure that you're not deleting actual road is a good first priority. Um, and maybe this would also be better in, well, maybe not. But just selecting these and uh, then deleting them from your collision. I like to keep them. Uh, in our case, since we're not even at 1,000 triangles, uh, like, yeah, keeping them is totally fine and it allows for some cool glitches to be found and what have you. But uh, this is a quote unquote proper track. So we are, and we should probably also, eh, I don't know. I don't know how to deal with that. Maybe it's maybe it better to just make it off road like this sliver here. Don't know, I also don't really care. Uh, so right, so now let's make this all trickable. Uh, and we'll just, we can P to separate by selection and uh, remove that material, add a new material and uh, make it pink and Trickable, and uh, yeah, uh, for our collision, we want these to be double sided. So, in our, if we go to our face orientation, you can see that this is incorrect. Uh, it, but it is also correct, right? Like you don't want to be able to drive through here. You also don't want to be able to drive through here. So one thing that you can just do is you can Shift D to duplicate this face, and then flip that normals, alt n, right, uh, and then F to flip, shift D to duplicate, and then alt n, and then flip. 
So that's cool. I uh, you can likewise do the same over here. Shift D, Alt N, F to flip. And uh, yeah, you sh this should probably be trickable. So let's do a loop cut. Control R, and make the very edge of this uh, P to separate by selection. And then maybe let's join it up with here. Control J, and remove that. I. Uh, yeah, remove the road material, and uh, if I go back to layout, this is what it looks like here, and that looks that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, there's nothing that's jumping out to me. Obviously, you want to avoid horizontal walls um, because there's a lot of glitching potential. Like this is making me slightly worried. I honestly, this whole thing is is maybe you know. There, there might be sh some shenanigans or potential to get stuck. Uh, not really, but like stuff like this, you know, it just kind of makes me worried. Um, in this case, I'd probably just delete all these. You, like you're never gonna interact with them, or you shouldn't be able to interact with them. Uh, and so, just removing them, you know, takes out any potential soft locked. Um, but that's that's all good. And we also want this um, water to be death. Death. And one thing we can do is we can double click up here and uh, just call them the actual names that we want them to be separate so off road. The material names is so when we're combining stuff, we know you know what that material is. This up here, once we've joined everything that we want together and separated everything that we want, uh, this is when we're going to be creating our flag file, how we know what's what. Uh, grass wall and um, this should be root. Cool. So now we can, this we're done with our KCL basically, we're done with our blender KCL um, because it's because it's easy and then we're going to FBX um, and we do want this to be a scale of one and we're going to call this uh, V2 KCL um, FBX and uh, if we go back into FBX Converter, remove, add FBX uh, version 2 KCL, and we're going to convert this to our OBJ convert. Okay, so now we have an OBJ file of our KCL right uh, here, and we need to convert this to a flag file. So the same way that we did last time, open in terminal, and WKCLT uh, pulls this up, right, and code or create flag file, which is CFF. And then you can just uh, grab this OBJ and drag and drop into here. And uh, now we have one warning. What did we get? Um, it already exists? No. What, what was our warning? Um, for, okay, it's, it's saying four of 1000 triangles have invalid values. That is 100% fine. Uh, four triangles is not something to be worrying about. Um, but if we open up this flag file uh, with Notepad, plus plus, or whatever have you, you can say this is what our flag files look like. Um, and so, I yeah, what we want, I I'm going to use f uh, function for this because I'm most familiar with this. This uh, follows the OBJ to KCL. Um, conventions, um, but you can use flag files. Uh, for example, Wexos Toolbox. Um, Wexos Toolbox right now is uh, down because I uh, it needs to access the internet for whatever reason. Uh, but you can also just search here KCL Flex, um, and I. Uh, Obviously, it shows you how to type A is is maybe the is maybe the preferred way to do things, but I know type F, and uh, as seen last time, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, not on type type A, but uh, type F. What do you do? You do. Uh, we want to find. Let's say I uh, I wall, but with uh, the grass effect so I can just go up to the top of the page and find wall here and 0c and it's going to be I want a 
bush. So that's going to be 0c, and then I want 005 is bush. So then I go over here into my flag file, and I say this um, grass wall, I want this to be, uh, first I'm going to uh, start recording a macro, so I can easily just get the um, f function, and uh, go here. I stop recording and then control shift P, which I did incorrectly. Really, really, control shift P. Okay, oh, I see, it's not quite down. Okay, that's good. Uh, but each, you know, object name is now associated with this, with this F function. So for the grass wall, we said it was zero C and then we want this to, if this would be trickable, we don't want this to be trickable, and we're gonna have this as variant five. So our road is, this is correct um, for default road, and I don't see any reason not to use default road. Uh, for slippery off-road, we can go to uh, slippery road, uh, but does sl um, that slightly slows you down, and we want this to be mud, so this is going to be 05, 001. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so 05 and 001. And trickable road, this is just going to be 00 for our road. And then we want uh, this to be a trickable bit here. For our wall, we want this to be 0C. And then we want this to be 4. These are walls that have been lowered. Um, yeah, so you don't get bean corners um, where you go over an edge and then you get caught up on the, the wall beneath. Um, this is the flag that Nintendo uses to signify that. Um, and then we could also, um, we could have like a rock variant or whatever. Um, I don't play with sound on, so I don't notice any of it at all. Although Bush does give you some good uh, visual effects, which is why I included it. But now water, we want this to be, um, if you go here, uh, we have our solid fall. Um, actually, we want uh, type 10, fall boundary. We want a fall boundary, and then we want a water fall boundary. So, um, yeah, there's, there's information here, but basically you just say we want our fell boundary, which is 10, and then we want our uh, setting one. Apologies for the noise. Um, we're gonna say this is going to be 10, and then we want this to be uh, one. And uh, we can save, and now we want to actually create our, um, create our KCL file. So we're going to do WKCL T and code, uh, and then we're gonna drag and drop our obj file um, here, drag and drop, and please drop. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, you, since we're in the same directory as um, this textures folder, we can just do uh, v2kcl.obj. And you, there's a bunch of options uh, that you can have, like the um, drop invalid triangles. Um, you can remove face down triangles. You can uh, or remove face down road, and I uh, make your KCL very optimized. So or make it very high quality, um, which creates a lot of lag. But for speed mods in particular, it makes your KCL more robust to people flying through the track. Um, I'm just going to encode it. And uh, then if we go to our textures folder, we now have a KCL file. So I'm going to grab the BRES and the KCL file that we just created and put it in our beginner course. Um, sorry. Um, did I not just copy them? copy and copy, control C, 
and paste. There we go. Um, and then we want this to replace the old course model as we want this to be our course model. And note that it has to be named uh, course underscore model dot various for it to recognize it. And then this has to be called course. Our skybox, uh, we can keep in the same place. Our mini map, we already created. Um, I think, I think we created it. I don't remember if we've created it. Huh. Well, if we haven't, then I'll, I'll definitely go back and do this. We have our Karibo that follows a root in our KMP. And now if we open up our KMP, uh, it will automatically detect the KCL file um, in here. And so you can see that now our start point is all messed up, which is not unexpected. Um, if we did have the actual um, start line as um, and some indicator next to it, we could make sure that we're starting exactly in the start line. Um, this is a classic Lorenzi's bug, and that's nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, there's still triangles there, but um, just not here. It looks like, yes, we, we forgot to flip our normals, um, or check our normals on this fence in the middle. So if you just go through here, you'll be able to fall through, um, which we'd go back and fix with our... KCL is pretty easy to just do, um, so we could do that. If we were feeling so inclined, all our enemy routes will have to be redone. And actually, let me just do that. Select all, delete selected, and then alt click, and then alt click and drag. And obviously these are the most basic item routes in existence, our enemy points. And uh, here, and here, and here, and here. And um, I can also alt click from here and drag it there. You can change um, some of the settings. So if I click on this point, I can say, uh, you know, these are the enemy paths and it requires a mushroom. Uh, or I can end the drift of the CPU. I can also in increase the point size. So right now it's the area of influence is really small. But if I set this to 100, now you can see it's a lot larger. I've never never actually messed around with these values myself. So um, so there's that. Um, but we have our basic enemy path. We're going to um, copy that over to the item path. We're going to redo the checkpoints in KMP Cloud because that's easy. Uh, respawn points, I for, uh, we're going to run it through Scaling's auto respawn. Um, the, our objects right now, uh, see this, this is why you create test things and don't go overboard on your KCL or KMP because you're going to have to redo a lot of these things. So I'm going to yeah, drag these back to more or less where they should be. And I'm going to change these this setting back to, back to zero. This was the setting about our item box shadow, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it, it caused a crash with the um, gecko code that I had enabled in Dolphin, and uh, I was not aware of that. It's kind of cool that it did cause a crash, but uh, maybe not from a user point of view. Um, and we could also alt D these around instead of uh, changing all of these values, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. So how's your day been? Good? That's good. Glad to hear it. Um, we have this Karibo here, with following the same settings as we found in Mushroom Gorge, um, I think. And these item boxes here, roughly equal spacing, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, you can do this in a line tool in KMP Cloud, and then they'll all be in a line instead of, you know, placed by hand. But KMP Cloud doesn't have good 3D, and there's you have to run a Python script so that way your objects are down here and not out in the random middle space. And I didn't want to do that. Well, I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. Um object in here that I would like to be able to reach and nice 
Uh, so these, yeah, let's change the height values. On, yeah, okay, they, they defaulted to the water beneath. All right, this is future self jumping in. Uh, now that you have all the objects, I'm just going to alt click and drag and to get more mushrooms so you don't fall off every two seconds. And it's okay if some of these are overlapping. Um, yeah, that's, that's all good. Um, that's kind of an established thing. Obviously you don't want it too much overlapping, but it's sort of established in the universe um, of Mario Kart Wii custom tracks that you do have overlapping. Um, and, ah, oh, shoot. Ah, okay. So when you, yeah, I'll click and drag it automatically places on the ground level. So uh, I'm just gonna copy this coordinate, this Y coordinate of 2000, and uh, start, start pacing this value. Ah, if there was only a better way to place objects. There is, but actually this, this might be easier in uh, KMP Cloud. This might be. Actually, let me just do that. Let me do that. Do I want to do that? I don't know. It might not be easier though. Because most of these we do want, like we're going to have to have some height variation eventually. Uh, and I, in KMP Cloud, it's hard to tell which one goes where and how much these actual changes in elevation matter. Right now, I'm just going to give them all a default 2000 so I have a you know base plane of what I'm looking at and then I can shape elevation from there. Wow, this is more tedious than I thought. Um, Obviously you can, well, I can't remember if I've said this before, but uh, scaling the objects means they, then you have to scale it on the, in the bones of the BRES file of the uh, Kanoko object, um, which I'm not super inclined to do right now. And so this is the, this is the lazy solution. Okay, so now we have all of them at uh, 2000. Apologies for the mouse sound is probably actually really irritating. Um, and now we're going to have some of these have more height. So we want this to maybe be, well, let's, let's try 3,500, 3,500. Nope. Let's try 5,000 or 5,000. Let's maybe, no, um, that looks right. Um, so let's just have these at 4,600 <laughs> because 5,000 did not look right. Uh, 4,600, 500. Um, and then we'll just, uh, yeah, we, we could just speed up through this part. I might do that in editing if I, if I have enough motivation to do so. 4,000, 3, I guess the main thing is you just don't want these being impossible to do which uh, it was definitely the case the first time around without all these extra mushrooms, just because yeah, mushrooms are not that big. I did not know that because I do not work often with, with mushrooms, um, mushrooms. Um, one thing that I do have to be cautious about is that you can't just go off here and you know, maybe, maybe I do want that and as part of my track, but just being very aware of you know people trying to take the tight line, can they do that? and how, you know, how many, yeah, it just changes the dynamic of the track. Uh, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? So, um, yes, this is, this is peak Mario Kart Wii modding right here. And uh, one day kids, you can do this too. X to delete, uh, 3000. And actually, I want one in between here at 2,500. Yeah, I think uh, 2,500 maybe, and 2,500, and uh, 3,000. Cool, I, th I think nah, this might be good. This might be good. 2,500. Now we need one here. And put it at 3,500. Yeah, that looks good. Um, 
I just say that and then I change around some values. Uh, now it looks good. Maybe there's enough mushrooms there. Cool. Um, and now I, I'm going to pass it back to past. Uh, yeah, past myself. So we can just increase the Y. So we go maybe a thousand and six. What about two thousand? Yeah, that seems that seems promising. Uh, let's say if we th say three thousand, also seems promising. If we say four thousand, seems promising, and let's say four thousand as well. Yeah, we could say four thousand and three hundred. Cool. Um, yeah. We redid our objects here, um, and we need to. This is this is the route that our default camera is on. Um, so these first three are just for the cameras that we want to leave alone. The actual route that we created was route three here, and this is for the Freebo, um, the Goomba, and let's have them move around here. And these settings, I've actually wouldn't be surprised if these settings controlled the speed of the object. Uh, if we get a crash, it's because I messed with these settings when I wasn't supposed to. Uh, you can also go on the KMP object query, which I showed last time, but it's the um, KMP object query. And then you type in, you know, Goomba. And then it'll show Kribo, and then the it, it doesn't show you here, but then you look at Mushroom Gorge for reference and see if the item, um, yeah, the actual item route select, you know, setting means anything. And it might, it might not. So I, that's cool. We now need to go into KMP Cloud so we can open with KMP Cloud. Or you can go KMP Cloud file open, um, whatever. I we need to view, um, sorry, I'm not being very articulate right now. We need to have some sort of background. So when we're creating our checkpoints, we know what we're drawing on top of and that's all good. And so now, yeah, now we can see this is, this is what we're doing and our start position. It's here. We changed it. That's cool. Our enemy routes. They're cool. Uh, we can copy this group and then we can delete all the, delete all the routes here. Delete, yep, delete, delete, and delete. And then we can paste and copy our group. And the reason why it doesn't like that initially is because um, enemy routes and uh, item routes have different uh, settings. So it, you know, what one thing might be valid there might not be valid there or what have you. And copy group and uh, paste and group add. And that should that should work fine. Um, checkpoints uh, we can delete and add. And so you can, uh, yeah, this is going to be our first one, our lap counting checkpoint. And uh, as perpendicular to the road as you can make them, I don't have patience for good checkpoints. So and they don't really matter when you're playing offline, so I won't. Uh, likewise, here you can you can do one, like go down here and say this is one checkpoint thing. But honestly, for split paths, it's sometimes easier to just go through them here. Um, yeah. And there's most assuredly going to be some sort of position glitch. But we won't get any no lap counts unless you have a lap counting checkpoint here and you're, you manage to miss it. Or you can also lag over it, which is why having really good checkpoints is worthwhile for if you want the track to be played online um, and you don't want people to lag through a key checkpoint and zero two. So this is setting, the, our, this is our key. Yes, we want this to be our key. This is gonna be a first one and uh, this also is our lap counter, which is why it's zero, zero. Um, 
yeah, that, that looks like a good spacing of checkpoints. Um, here's our objects. Here are mushrooms. And uh, yeah, that uh, one thing we now need to do, is we have our KMP here. We need to uh, put this through scalings auto respawn <coughs> because we want the respawn values to be automatically linked up. So if we go into our um, custom tracks folder and we go to our, I know I have it somewhere. Huh, I have it somewhere. Uh, where is it? I have no idea what that is. Uh, really? 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 What if I just search uh, scalings? Scaling. Okay, is it in like in here? I have my um, yeah Mario Kart Wii programs. Cool. So now I go to scalings, put it in here. Make sure not to have any uh, kmp.txt files in here because if you do, then it will overwrite that, and you might not want that. Um, or no, it will overwrite your kmp, which is something you really don't want. Um, and then you can just execute. Um, so this is the txt. If you just take this out, then the next time someone comes in here and executes, the txt is already exists. So it will just overwrite that data on the KMP file itself. So I'm going to bring those out and put them in my beginner course and uh, replace the file that already exists. And now we, we had our course.kmp. We have a course.brs. We have our Goomba that we added. We have our KCL that we just created. This should be good to go. All right, this is future me going to wrap up this. So we've made the edits to our KMP. We've made our KCL um, with the create flag file um, command. And then we've done our course model and we've uh, added that water effect and we've changed around those values. One thing that I forgot to change that I'm just remembering now that would be nice to change is on the materials, ReStudio automatically calls the backside. We want like the fence to not uh, call the inside. We want to keep all of them. So we're gonna cut call none of them. Uh, grave, likewise, same thing. And uh, grave, likewise, same thing. Lamp, likewise, same thing. Tree, likewise, same thing. And that should be it. Um, yeah. And now the final last thing is this Kanoko BRS. Uh, obviously, I talked about scaling it, and you can change the bones of these uh, and scaling it up to two. Uh, I've never dealt with many of these. I don't know what to tell you there. But one thing that I can do is look at these textures. These textures, uh, if you notice, all of them are are sharing the same or there's there's one that's that's using the union yeah this is using the union or some combination thereof and you can you know see what are these textures uh, that's for light and dark uh, but we want to change these textures to not just be uh, what do you call it red that's that's the color but we want it to be some sort of you know uh, more gloomy green dark one. So uh, you can right click and export, and you want to export this as a PNG. That sounds good. And we'll also export this one as a PNG. And then uh, we can go into our textures folder and just uh, edit these. Uh, right click, open with paint.net. And we can probably even just use the fill fill tool for this with some alpha. So uh, go to our fill tool, and then we want to change our color to be some sort of, this is a good dark green, and we can add some maybe blue to it. And we can also add some alpha to it. So that way, when we fill in here, 
it uh, yeah, it doesn't just overwrite it. So if we had no alpha and we filled it, uh, or if we had, yeah, yeah that's no alpha. Um, and then as we increase or decrease alpha, I think this right here is maybe a, is maybe a cool, actually I want more blue in the color. I want, I want, no, I want more green in the color. Oh, that, that's looking, oh, <laughs> that's looking off settling, which is, which is good. Maybe, I don't know. So the, the green one, we don't care because we're not using that variant, but let's, let's see what this, let's see what this, this does. Um, so we'll, we'll save it. And then we'll uh, also open the, oh yeah, you can definitely see the difference there. Uh, you know, open this as well, and we'll just uh, just do this. Yeah, good enough. And file and save it. And then uh, last thing, we've created these new textures, and then we just need to uh, replace them with uh, themselves, basically. So this is Kanoko Union, and uh, I'm trying to find it, and I cannot. Uh, there we go, Kanoko Union. So now we've replaced it with this. CMPR is solid and for stuff with uh, sketch uh, transparency, but not alpha or right, that, that's not right. Um, what do you call it? Either, either off or on, stencil alpha. There we go, that's what it's called. And the default settings are fine. And we can also uh, replace this and with the, with the copy and uh, CMPR is fine, and the MIP levels is, is fine, and we can save that. And now we're finally ready. We've done our course, we've done our map models, or, no, oh, we're not done. Last thing we need to do, uh, <laughs> the final, 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 final. Um, we need to create our mini map. So I'm gonna copy and paste these because this is all of all the things that we want. Uh, actually, I need to create a new uh, right click on Blender and get a new application of Blender open. Um, we're going to create our mini map. Uh, so, new general and uh, AX delete, and then go in here. Oh, that's the canceled track, and you'll never see, it will never make the light of day, and Q to is, you know, number pad period or Q, and uh, yeah, this is this is our road that we want to turn into a mini map. If you're if you don't have it nice and segmented, you can do the same thing that you did for your KCL, in joining all and then just selecting the faces. You know, A Control J and then just selecting the faces that you want with Control clicking or Circle Select, C to Circle Select, um, or you know a combination of uh, one L is to select linked. I don't know if I mentioned that uh, hotkey. Um, yeah, so ours are we're nicely separated in the first place. So we just have all of these, and if we go over to our shading, you can see this is this is what it looks like, and that's that's fine. So uh, we can file export, uh, and then we can actually just go straight to an OBJ. I think. I don't know. I haven't created a mini map in in quite some time, actually. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna do this and then uh, I'll walk you through it and if it doesn't work you'll never see this you'll never see this clip ah so tutorial blender long form I uh, mini map obj and we're we don't need to do the material groups um, because uh, it's a mini map we don't need material groups but you can do this if you want like different grays or whatever um, we just want the objects and our scale I uh, OBJ by default does not scale up, so we should scale it up by 100, I think. I think. <laughs> Obviously, if this, does, this doesn't work, you won't see this clip. Um, export OBJ. Now, we have, uh, in here we have our minimap, OBJ. How do we go from an OBJ to some sort of BRES file? Uh, well, this is C tools. Uh, so, C tools. Oh my goodness, I haven't used C tools forever. 
I, but if you go, you can just search on, on the online. And I, I think most of the C tools things are down, but there are, there are a few that are still out there. We want the BRES editor and you can just create a BRES from an OBJ file. Uh, it, this is really old. So there are a lot of problems with it. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is new to modding. Um, so like anything with transparency has, you know, problems with it. So we can open, maybe, let's see. Actually, do we want, do we want new? Yeah, we want new. So this says we want new BRES and then import and then an OBJ. And then we can go over to our, to our folder, find our mini map and we don't want to load materials. And then this is going to be a map model. This is the mini map. And we don't want to cut out anything. So this is just the default. Um, yeah. And it crashed. Nice. No, it didn't crash. Wait, did it? Okay. Yeah. So here's our, here's our thing. Uh, the reason why it looks horrible like that is because we forgot to triangulate or I forgot to triangulate. You didn't forget anything. You're awesome. Um, so we can just go in here, select everything, uh, tab into edit mode. No. Okay. Uh, a and then control T to triangulate. Um, select everything, A, and then control T to triangulate. I um, mean, you don't have to remember that um, command, but it can be useful. Actually, I'm just going to A and control J to join everything into one object because uh, I don't need there to be three separate objects. So now I can go and I can file export as an OBJ and uh, scale is 100. Sure, I don't know if that's what I want or not, um, but I can uh, new and overwrite that and import wavefront obj uh, mini map obj uh, don't load materials and i want this to be a map model so now uh, if we look at it this is eh, this looks somewhat like what we want and we can save it and then i uh, put it in here call it map model model without furious yes and um I'm going to now create the track and see if it works. I, uh, which is not which is not the best tutorial per se, but uh, yeah, WSCST create uh, beginner course dot d overwrite, uh, and then I'm going to. I can't remember if I showed this or not, but I can do WSC check beginner course dot SES to see if there are any uh, problems with it. So these checkpoints are like, yeah, you're going to get position bugs. Yeah, you're going to get, you know, position bugs. Maybe you're going to get position bugs. Uh, this, yeah, that, that, that seems pretty uh, notable. Uh, and that might cause some errors when we go from one section to another. Um, yeah, so uh, if it does turn out that we have the problem, uh, we just go in our the, it probably has to do with when we just copy and paste it over the routes. Um, and so what we'd have to do is we just have to go ahead and KMP cloud and make sure that we have all the previous routes defined or just do the item routes from scratch again, which can be, which can be easier. Um, position bugs. I, Ooh, I see. It doesn't like the, so, uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't like that really. Okay. Um, but uh, it's saying this is too too high, I think. Um, yeah, because it wants us to shift it uh, up. But when you have an online limit, that's talking about like your item routes online might get affected, but not offline. Uh, so yes, we did add those post effects. They might be too strong and we might have to edit them by a post effect editor. Um, and we did modify this. Uh, we're missing the item box BRES which I forgot, which, uh, which is why this is useful. So I, uh, I'm going to quickly add that. So just any previous course, I uh, just go and, oh, this doesn't have an item box. I really, okay. Um, hold on. Uh, what am I doing? I can't think at all right now. Canoco course, Ruby. Okay. Mario Kart Wii course. These have item boxes. 
Find an item box, control C. Uh, different item boxes have slightly different, so like Bowser's Castle item box looks different than um, Luigi's Serpent item box, which looks more normal. Um, but there's not too many item box variants out there. Uh, you can create your own pretty easily just by editing the BRS file and those textures. Um, yeah, now we're in our beginner course and control V, so we now have item boxes. That's what caused the crash the first time. Um, so now I have this and I can uh, go ahead and WS, nope, nope. Right click, open in terminal, WSTST, create beginner course dot D slash over right. Boom. And we could do the check thing again, but uh, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to. And let's see, we, I'm trying to figure, we, oh yes. So the last thing we need to do, uh, so we, we have our mini map, but we need to actually get this in the center. Right now it's going to be off at one angle or another, and you might not be able to see it or whatever. So what you can do, WSCST, mini map, dash dash auto and then uh, beginner course dot, dot SES. Um, maybe we want minimap patch. And we can see if that works. Yeah, that, that worked. I, I, <laughs> I haven't used this command in forever, but uh, it is what you do when you use minimaps. Uh, WFCST minimap dash dash auto. Um, and that just uh, should nicely center it. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if it so it actually changed the SCS you know, file itself. So I'm now going to see if this works. And I guess you may or may not see it along with me. And let's pull up Dolphin and EXE. And I actually have my controller with me this time. So the, um, the what do you call it? Um, gameplay should not be god awful like it was last time. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I forgot. A lot of this can be done, um, like, okay, I forgot a KMP object, or, oh, I forgot a, uh, you know, some small KCL change. Um, the bigger, um, the, the bigger things are when you have, like, an actual course model, oh, my, my course is scaled too large, um, in which case you have to do everything all over again. Um, and so, which is why testing gameplay first is critically really important. Um, but here's our track. We can, yeah, we have, it's, that's looking good. We have the background in the background. We have uh, item boxes here. We have trees, we have rocks, we have graveyards. This is slippery off-road. Yeah, and we have you know, lack of twos yelling at us and we have this water down here maybe looks a bit too much like toothpaste for my liking oh, but that's all good we, we got we have some blue in the distance uh, whether that's post effects or whether that's the um, shadier colors if you run into this we're going to get a bush uh, wall effect and uh, let's look at these mushrooms yeah so we can see we changed the color on them and now Oh, I see. So some of them are still rotated, uh, which I forgot to forgot to change. And notably, also, when I did the auto respawn, it uh, didn't know what it where to place um, the respawn. Um, so it just placed it over the kill plane. And so, you know, there were there weren't any objects when in scaling auto respawn. So it obviously does not know what to do. So you could just go into KMP and Lorenzi's and fix that. But that's fine, you know. That's that's a simple enough thing that I don't don't feel the need to fix. Um, actually, the gameplay on this isn't horrible, except these mushrooms. These mushrooms are god awful. They're like disgusting. Yeah, these are these are some good mushroom peaks mushrooms. Yuck. Yeah. So I <laughs> I don't use mushrooms that often because I don't like them. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe. <laughs> This, this will, I don't know, motivate you to also not use mushrooms, and then the world would be a better place. Ah, we have a track. Yay. Congratulations. The fully functioning track, all yours. Uh, and 
yeah I let's see something like that okay um I couldn't fix the respawn I don't want to uh yeah I think I think I've shown you I uh, most all that would happen so I uh, I'm also have additional um short little five minutes things on how to create a mini map how to create a course model oh actually wait is the mini map on here yes the mini map works oh my goodness i'm totally blind to all these mini maps the mini map works i'm so excited this is awesome okay um so i've shown you how to do objects how to do routes i've shown you how to do animated textures i've shown you how to create a course model how to do test tracks how to uh, do blender which takes a while and you know just needs a lot of practice um, there are several tutorials which I I do recommend um, or like different channels that do more beginner um, blender low poly modeling um, and uh, yeah we made a track and uh, if you actually made it on this journey with me thank you very much uh, I do appreciate it uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions feel free to contact the greater community um, of CG creators we're very you know happy to have new creators that are that are looking for uh, yeah tracks to make ideas to be had and uh, this this is this is nice and emotional anyways I'll sign up now uh, good luck on your own tracks yeah